conversations, but you can go to churches all over America and you will find it, it looks like it looks here. It's just, it's just amazing to me. It's just amazing that God transcends all those different locations. Only God can do that. People have not talked to work that out. We were in a little church in Diamond, Missouri. Uh, and you know what? If there's anything I've learned in traveling and speaking in churches and doing things like that, I tell you what, sometimes the most powerful churches are churches about this size. Churches about 100, 200, 300 people. We were in a church service about 150, 200 people a couple of Wednesday nights ago, and we experienced a powerful move of the Lord. Powerful move of the Lord. We did the illustrated sermon. Remember one where I had Ron come down here and he turned backwards, you know, and he had the ball because he was, he was thinking, thinking about the past and he had to face the future and let go of whatever's the past. Remember identities and those things? Did that message there, and I mean, they just flooded the altars. That's just right where they were at. That's just right where they were going. That's like what they were going through. They're just amazing. But there's something else that's really struck me as I as I go to different churches. One of the things that's plaguing the church in America today is called carnality. Carnality. Anybody know what carnality means? <laughs> yeah, basically, it, it, it works kind of like this. We are two parts. Every person in this room, we are two parts. There's a spiritual part of us, and there's a physical part of us. You understand that? There's a spiritual part of us that desires the things of God. There's the, the spiritual part of us that knows we have a Creator, knows we have a Heavenly Father, and is constantly in search of connecting that relationship, of building that relationship. That's the spiritual side of us. But we have this physical side of us that desires things that are contradictory to what the spiritual side of us knows we're supposed to do and not do. You with me so far? The problem is, both of them have an appetite. And both have to be fed to live. The real problem with that is, the world offers huge amounts of food to the physical side. Entertainment, Technology, in music, and everything you can imagine, there is a constant outpouring of things in the world to feed the physical part of us, especially the physical parts of us that are contradictory to what we know is right in the spirit. The hard thing is to feed the spiritual side of us, you've got to go, you've got to make the effort to go do that. You're not going to walk out of here and there's hundred things to feed your spirit. Now there's some things to feed your spirit. Okay? There are people that have dedicated their lives to providing you Christian music. There are people that have dedicated their lives not just to providing you preaching of God's word, but to literally, they've sold everything they own to get a little radio station, to put a little radio station on so you can hear God's word no matter where you are. There is even people that have done great things on TV so you might hear God's word. But it's not like your physical side. Okay? And so, basically, if I had a group of people that were standing down here with me, I could kind of divide them into three groups. Okay? There are people <clears throat> that don't know Christ. Now, they know there's a God. I, 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 even people that call themselves atheists, I think that in their deepest core, they know there's a creator. They know that there's more to this than meets the eye. Even your most hardcore scientist has to realize there's some things they can't explain. They, they can't, you know, I heard it like this one time, this, and this is a fact. It would be for the Big Bang Theory to have happened, and in fact there was a show, a movie that I watched not too long ago, where it was a scientist, and he said, this is basically what it is, and he believes in evolution. He says, I realize what we believe in is so, is very extreme, the probability is low, but I still believe in it. He said it would be like a, a tornado came through and assembled parts from all over everywhere that resulted in a perfect Corvette. That is the probability for the Big Bang Theory to have created everything that we see now. You understand that? That's how extreme it is. That's how extreme it is. So people know. So there's three groups. There's a group of people here, and I believe that every person that does not know God is searching for God. I believe that we just have this part of us that's just constantly seeking 
to fill this something in us that we can't explain, this intangible something. What is it? What's my purpose? Why am I here? And we know we have a creator. And we, there are people in constant search of this connection, of being reconciled. They just don't want to call it God. They don't want to call it Jesus. They just, it's something. So they spend their whole life searching for that something. Okay? Then there's another group that have crossed that line, okay, who have said, you know what? I believe there's a God. I don't just want to make, just say he's God. I want to say he's my God. I believe that his son was Jesus Christ and he came to die for me because I could not span that gap between where I am and where he is because of sin. And he died to pay for that. And I've accepted that. I believe in him. I believe Jesus, the Son of God. He died, but he rose again. And I have asked him to come live inside of me. I'm no longer my own. I now belong to him. He is my God, and I am his child. He lives in me. But in this group, on this side of the line, this is where I see so much trouble in people today. There are two groups within this right here. I don't talk about, I'm not talking about denominations and all those kinds of things. But I'm talking in people that know God, who have accepted Him as their Savior, who say, I want to make you my God. There are two groups of people. There are Christians who try to live according to the Spirit. And there are Christians who say, I'm a Christian, but I want everything the world's got to offer. I'm, I'm all these things too. Scripture says it like this. There's supposed to be a noticeable difference between the people on this side of the line and the people on that side of the line. Not that we're better, not that we're smarter, not that we're brighter, but we're different because we possess the Holy Spirit. We're supposed to be different. We're supposed to be different. And here's what's happened. Those that have accepted Christ and are really seeking Him, they're put, uh, they're put way out over here. I guess what they're called. The religious right, those fundamentalists, those evangelicals, those religious nuts. That's what we're called. Did you know in America, the country that was founded <coughs> upon biblical principles, the country whose first universities were founded to, to raise up preachers and teachers of God's word, the country whose constitution was formed on biblical principles by godly men and women who knew Christ as their Lord and Savior, who, aside from the Constitution, have written extensive documents saying to separate the Constitution and the foundations of America from the God of that, it would be, would be fatal. And so now, for those of us who stand over here, and to stand over here just means that you have said there's only one way to God, and that's to His Son, Jesus Christ. Only one way. And we believe the Bible to be God's Word, every bit of it, we believe it's just as true today as it was the day it was written. If you say those two things, you are considered an extremist. I'll never forget when the article came out in one of the.